Hello and welcome. I'm here with Mark Naismith, who's UK CEO for WSP. And we're going to be talking about the company's rebrand and also the Cities and Infrastructure white paper that was delivered to the government last month. Exciting times for WSP, growth and a rebrand. And Mark, you've been with the company since 1988. Surely you were in short trousers when you arrived. Absolutely. And you're sitting next to your beautiful new logo. Tell us why a rebrand and why now? Well, the why now, um, WSP has grown rapidly over the last well, 30 years, but in particularly over the last 10 years. And in the last five to 10 years, we have acquired um, 85 businesses globally. So now is the time for us all to become a united business and to work together and to go forward together as a business. Um, and to forget the past because we are now all one WSP globally. So now, now is as good a time to do it as any. And has it been a seamless and painless process? It has been relatively because there's always emotion attached mm. to existing brands and existing company names. But our, our style is to co-brand for a period rather than just dropping the name because when we acquire a business, it's very important because we're buying the brand, we're buying the people, we're buying the intellect and the intelligence that comes with that business. So to co-brand for a period and then to eventually unite as one and that's what we've decided to do um, this, this year. So very exciting times globally, not just in the UK. And how is the rebrand going? How is it being received internally? Very well, a lot of excitement. And we've made a big thing of it because it's so important for the employees and for our colleagues to be excited by it because it is a big occasion for us. So a number of town halls, celebrations, cakes, um, it's gone down really well. And it's given us something to talk to our clients about as well, which is nice. You can't go wrong with cake. Really, you can't can go you? wrong with cake, no. And of course, you've, you've not just been busy with the rebrand, but you've been very busy with the integration of Mouchel into the corporation. How's that been going? It's gone very well. Um, we engaged with, with staff and colleagues very early on. We spoke to clients um, and we brought everybody together under a new structure in the UK business. So everybody knows within the business where they sit, where they stand, which part of the organisation they're, they're, they're attached to. So um, another couple of months to go until the integration will be complete, but so far so good. Um, you've been busy on something else as well. Can we talk about the Cities and Infrastructure white paper that, uh, as I said, was delivered to the government last month? Interesting timing. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, tell us first, though, what was it that prompted you to think there was a need for a white paper in the first place? Well, in the UK, we are fortunate because we have a national infrastructure plan which does define um, infrastructure spend over the next five years, but linked to the current government. Um, the, the white paper, though, was to promote the need to the government and to identify 10 key points that we felt as a consultancy and in infrastructure um, sector that we felt were key and important to, to raise at the government level and to allow the infrastructures to continue to be built in the UK to support the economy. And one of those 10 points is the appointment of a Minister for Infrastructure. For you, is that at the, at the very heart of this? Is it, is it the most important recommendation? That, that to us is fundamentally one of the key points. At the moment, we don't have an infrastructure director in the government. And you can imagine the amount of infrastructure that's going on in the UK, be it rail, highways, schools, hospitals, and a huge spend, which is all very much linked to the economy. Yet there is no government official um, in, in, in power who can actually take the initiative forward. So if such a minister were to be appointed, how would things be different? What, what would he or she do differently? It would be more structured. From a skill-based point of view, it's also very important because we need the skills in the country to deliver these projects. And if there's not continuity in the construction and the spend, you will lose these skills. The skills will go overseas. Um, probably Crossrail is quite a good example, to tunnelling skills, all these skills will disappear um, and then we'll need to start from scratch. So you need the constant flow of projects coming through um, in, in a structured manner. Mm. And you said something interesting there and I've, I've read it in the, the white paper which I've, which I've looked at, about people not understanding what infrastructure is. Is there something in, in the terminology that, that people aren't What that really getting? refers to is um, not understanding what infrastructure is, it's, it's actually, we all use infrastructure every day to come to work. You use roads, you use public transport, you, you might drive, you might go on your bike. You need that infrastructure in place to allow you to do that. A lot of people don't make that connection. So if you don't have the infrastructure, 
theoretically the world mm. will ground to a halt. And that's the exciting thing about what we do. We design um, sustainable infrastructure for the future. Another interesting word that comes up in, in the paper is connectivity. Connectivity between cities. Can you tell us a little bit more about your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I mean, connectivity at the end of the day, it's roads, it's rail, it's, it's, it's transportation between, between cities. Um, and it's that connection between, if you take London as an example, be it, be it Birmingham or Manchester, um, high speed rail, um, c connections between cities, just making people more mobile so that you can still work in London, but you could travel, you could commute further. Um, but we need these arteries, the, the transport arteries up and down the country to connect the towns and cities together, which again is all part of building the economy and the economic growth. Um, be it residential or commercial or whatever, but without that connectivity, you're kind of isolated. And is this part of devolving powers to, to power to the region, empowering the regions? It is, but, and I truly believe in that devolved, um, empowered um, model, um, because it allows the regions and the cities to, to build their own vision for their own cities. Mm -hmm. But the important thing is it has to be connected to a wider plan for the, for the UK. It can't be separate, it needs to be joined up. But with that power, um, the, the local authorities and the councils and the cities can come up with their own master plans and develop and connect with other cities. Mm. Um, at the beginning of our conversation, you talked about a five-year plan. Is that five-year plan part of the problem? The five-year plan helps, but the five-year plan tends to be linked to the political situation, so the current government with their five-year term. The problem is we want that five-year plan to become a 10, 15, 20-year plan that will continue, regardless of who's in government, will continue from government to, to government. So it's a commitment at the start as a UK economy that we will see these infrastructure projects through from start to finish. Because a lot of these infrastructure projects last longer than five years. If you take high-speed uh, rail, for instance, you know that's going to go into 2030 plus. Mm. There's no point starting the first phase and then five years deciding we're going to stop. It's a long-term vision and a long-term plan. Mm. And in fact, the issue of timing is quite interesting here, isn't it? Because you've got <laughs> you've got Brexit, and now, uh, surprise, surprise, you've got a general election. How is that going to have an impact on your your objectives or your vision? Well, I think the I think the general election, given the Brexit situation, the general election, I think it, personally, I think it's a good thing to happen, and it's good that it's happening quickly. You know, we, I think from the announcement through to the general election, it was six weeks, mm. seven weeks. So in that time, very little time for the, for any hiatus in the economy. But I think what that will do as well is it will bring um, whichever government ends up in post will we'll have the backing of the majority of the country to go ahead and needs to be done to negotiate our way through Brexit. Um, I think that will also bring back into the economy some confidence because there's been a bit of a dent in confidence um, with all the different agendas going on at the moment and particularly in the private sector where the confidence is low because in the private sector from an investment point of view nobody quite knows what is now a good time to invest or not mm. or should we hold off to see what happens when the Brexit um, negotiations have, 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 have happened. So if all goes according to plan and all of your recommendations are taking, taken on board and implemented, paint a picture for us, if you will, of what the world, what the UK will look like, what will be different, what will we notice? We want to be the leaders in the world in innovation and um, transportation and our infrastructure. Um, to attract investment into the country, both well, in, in, inward investment and external investment into the UK. The UK is still very much seen as a safe haven for, for, for investment and we want to continue that. There's so much more we need to do. And are you optimistic that things are going to move in the direction that you would like them to? I am, I am optimistic um, because I do believe we have got a very strong foundations in the country, a very strong economy generally. Um, so I'm optimistic going forward, you know, talking about engineering and infrastructure, we come from a heritage of fantastic engineering projects. Mm. So we have the knowledge, we have the talent, we've got the skills, we've got the resources. Um, we just need a solid plan and strategy to take us forward in the right direction. But I'm, I am confident that it will happen. Well, we shall be watching with great interest. Thank you very much for, for telling us about it. And if you'd like to find out more or even download a copy of the white paper, then go to wsp.com. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.